Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Alex and this is The Car Creative. And in this video, I'm going to be doing my review and hands-on kind of experience with the Sigma 24 to 70. Now I know this isn't the most current or newest lens on the market, but I do get a lot of people asking me about which lens should I buy? When do I need to buy this lens? What lens is best for this, that, and the other thing? Gear, gear, gear. As a beginner, the 24 to 70 can be a huge asset for you to figure out what focal length is your favorite before you maybe dive into prime lenses that bring you those lower, more buttery apertures. Now, my niche is in automotive photography. I love it, I think it's super fun. So what I'm gonna be doing is taking this 24 to 70, are heading over to our local Porsche dealership and they're gonna let me take out a vehicle. Um, it's not a Porsche. So we're gonna be taking out a car, going to shoot. So I hope you guys stick around and come hang out with me. I will be shooting photos and videos on the Sigma 24 to 70 and pretty much everything you see beyond this point is going to be from that lens. We have made it to Porsche Center Calgary. We are shooting on the Sigma 24 to 70 at 24 mil in 4K, which gives you about a 1.1 times crop. So this isn't quite the full frame. I could shoot on 1080p, but then, then it's not crispy. So we're just gonna shoot in this mode and I hope you guys enjoy what we do here today. I'm trying to find the car that we're taking out, but uh, it's not out here yet. I'm really looking forward to it. It's a car that I have never driven before and I hope that you guys will enjoy it too. We're gonna take a ton of photos with the 24 to 70. I will upload them and put a link down below for all the pixel peepers that really like kind of taking a deep dive into the photos. You guys can go download the photos down below and if you want, feel free to post them to Instagram and just make sure to tag me in them so I can see the epic work you guys do. We are in the basement of Porsche Center Calgary. There's a Turbo S right here beautiful and chalk gray. Taycan 4S's, so cars everywhere, but we are not taking a Porsche today, unfortunately, uh, but we are taking one of their used fleet, and let me show that to you right now. There we go, guys, not a bad trade-off, hey? Switching from there to there, I'll take it. Now one last thing we gotta do before we get out of here. Now, one of the things that I really love about a Sigma 24 to 70, or really any 24 to 70 for that matter, is that it is so diverse. You can literally stand in one spot and try out every single focal length till you find one that you really like and that fits best for your situation, your environment, the lighting. You guys can see here that I shot at 24 millimeter, 28 millimeter, 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, and then all the way up to 70 millimeters. And I didn't have to move at all. But you can see how the compression changes. I didn't change any of the settings in between. It's just such a versatile lens and that's one of the main reasons I love it. And I think why beginners should actually start with a 24 to 70 or 24 to 105 or some kind of zoom lens so you can get a feel for what kind of focal length you really enjoy using. Another great thing about this lens is that it is image stabilized. So as you can see, I'm hand holding it here and uh, I've turned off all of the in-body image stabilization on the Canon R6. So what you see here is all lens at 24 millimeter with of course that 1.1 times crop on the 4K. Now, one thing to note specifically with the 24 to 70 Sigma is it is a very heavy lens. It's quite large, um, but the glass is absolutely stunning and I think that's probably what adds to a mass majority of the weight. Now, if you haven't seen my Sigma 85 millimeter review, I'll link it up here. But that shows you where Sigma is going, or at least I hope where Sigma is going, in that you have really beautiful glass in a smaller, more lightweight kind of package. But one thing I do want to show you guys is mounting the Sigma 24 to 70 onto the R6 and the Ronin RS. And we'll do a little bit of video and you guys can see what it looks like in 4K.
guys can see, the Sigma 24 to 70 is a beast of a lens. It is absolutely beautiful, so fun to work with. The video that I just took with the Ronin RS2 was giving me a bit of issues, if I'm being honest. It's such a heavy lens, and I balanced it at the 24 millimeter spot when I probably should have balanced it kind of in the middle somewhere so that when I changed focal lengths in between the shoots, uh, it wouldn't throw the gimbal off balance. I have been using this lens for a long time now and I really enjoy it. Yes, it's heavy, it's a lot of glass and metal, but that means it's really high quality build materials. You guys can see the glass in this thing is so beautiful. It has four spherical elements, super multi-layer coating, hypersonic motor autofocus system. Now, I don't know what that means to you guys, but to me, what I really care about is getting the dang thing in my hands, using it, seeing the image, and feeling the experience. And I do hope that Sigma in the future starts moving towards what they did with their 85 mil lens, make it a little bit lighter, a lot more user friendly, but still have that high quality image that Sigma is known for. And it does have an 82 millimeter diameter, which I guess isn't too bad if you go ahead and get variable ND filters. I've been using the Nissi Global stuff and been absolutely loving it. Now this is one thing you need to look into when you're looking to buy a 24 to 70 lens, whether it's Canon, Tokina, Sigma, which is what I went with. Some of them, A, are more expensive, so you have the budget for it, then go for it. But a lot of the other ones were not image stabilized. So that's a big reason why I went with the Sigma lenses. Also, I just love their glass. I think they make an amazing image. But if you're not super sold on getting the tack sharp image or you're not zooming into your images to see all the vignetting or any of that weird stuff on the edges then you can probably go with a cheaper lens just get to know what your favorite focal length is have a nice 2.8 aperture which gives you a really good bokeh especially when you're zoomed into 70. now whether you are with canon or sony i'll link a couple of these items down below so you guys can check them out on amazon uh, and see which one's right for you because there's no right lens, one right lens for everyone depending on what system you're on. Uh, I just love Sigma. This has been kind of my go-to daily driver. My favorite lens of all time is the Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4 art lens. And between this lens and bringing that one, they pair together kind of perfectly. Uh, I don't shoot heaps of long focal length stuff. Again, like I said earlier, guys, if you do want a pixel peep, feel free to go check the link down below and I will drop some of these photos down there for you. But there you have it, guys. It's a really quick review of my thoughts on the Sigma 24 to 70. I think it's something that everyone should have in their kit. All in all, guys, I do hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed hanging out. If you did, please hit that like button for me. Comment down below if you own a 24 to 70, which one if you like it or if you would recommend any other lenses to everyone that's watching here. I really appreciate your time. It means a lot to me that you guys are here hanging out. Um, feel free to subscribe if you want to keep hanging out and enjoying videos like this. I'd love to have you guys around a little longer. But otherwise, I do hope to see you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace. Oh.